Hello everyone, so I'm back again with another video and today we'll talk about chaos engineering. What is chaos engineering? What is chaos testing? You must have heard these terms and this is not new, but it's, uh, it's in use for quite a long time and if we'll uh, talk about any which which all companies are using this chaos engineering and chaos testing is you can name it and every top company is using it for example google or amazon or microsoft or netflix every uh, good engineering company have uh, uses this chaos engineering principles and they do the chaos testing of their products why we need to do this chaos testing we need to do the chaos testing because uh, we cannot avoid failures failures are given and everything will eventually fail over time it can be related to network security or cpu memory system will fail and system and we cannot avoid it so why if we cannot avoid it so let's design our system so that even if it will fail uh, the application will not break you cannot legislate against the failures so focus on the fast detection and response so as per the definition, chaos engineering is the discipline of experimenting on a distributed system in order to build confidence in the system capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. So we introduce some uh, events or we inject some fault or failures in the system using which we, we and what is the reason of doing that? Uh, it's not to disturb the system. The reason is to do that is to make sure that we came to know or come to know what issues the system will have if will not if anything fails so chaos doesn't cause the problems it is not negative testing it helps you to reveal the problems that will that your application will have if something fails so basically it takes tests the resiliency of the system what is the resiliency resiliency is the ability of system to adapt to changes failures and disturbances we know that we have a lot of issues in network, servers, application of people, with people as well. So if our system is more resilient, it means the uh, application will remain up or, even, or can come up uh, again after the failures. How to inject this fault in the system? So in any of your infrastructure, whether on AWS or on Azure, like this is AWS example, where you can uh, define the experimental template like uh, whether you need to turn or uh, turn on the ec2 instance or whether you need to turn on the s3 or whether you need to turn on the cache part or network part you define it and you, you also you can schedule it when you want to inject it and uh, once it will get executed uh, so you can see that if rds is failing or ec2 instance is failing or any uh, ports on Kubernetes is failing, what happens to your application? And if your application is properly designed, then your whole system will not go down. Chaos Monkey, uh, it, the Chaos Engineering is uh, popular with the Chaos Monkey as well. Netflix has, uh, is using the term uh, Chaos Monkey. You can go to the GitHub slash Netflix slash Simon Army to learn more on this. So, in chaos engineering or chaos testing, we inject the failures. Uh, why we inject? To uh, build the confidence in the system so that even if something fails, uh, the applica whole application will not get crashed. So we can inject the failures at application layer. Uh, we can uh, do the host failure or resource attacks or CPU memory. We can have uh, uh, issues at the network uh, layer. So we can inject something at the, ne uh, at the network and also the reason attacks so how we do typically so we first of all we uh, define the uh, templates we uh, run the experiment then we verify okay what all failed and whatever uh, failed how we can improve on those once uh, we'll improve again we'll run it and we'll see the steady state so whatever uh, hypothetically we are defining for the application we can get it tested with the help of chaos testing and we can come to know that whether the system runs perfectly as per the design or not so chaos in practice uh, talks about how to do this 
So specifically address the uncertainty of distributed system at scale. Case engineering can be thought of as the facilitated facilitation of experiments to uncover systematic weakness. These experiments follow four steps. First, start by defining a steady state as some measurable output of the system that indicates normal behavior. Hypothesize that this steady state will continue in both the control group and the experimental group. Now, introduce the variable that reflect real-world events like, like server that crashed, hard drives that malfunction, network connection issues, etc. And at last, try to disapprove the hypothesis by looking for the difference in a steady state between the control group and the experimental group. The harder it is to disturb the steady state, the more confidence we'll have in the behavior of the system. So if with QoS uh, testing, if uh, nothing gets broken, then we'll have more confidence in our application. If a weakness is uncovered, we now have a target for improvement before that behavior manifests in the system at large. So, as we learned, first step is to define the steady state. Second is to introduce the chaos. You can use any chaos templates. Third, verify the steady state. And then fourth, roll back the chaos. So, we typically think of when we design the system, what if load balancer fa fails or what if the cache redis fails or what if RDS uh, fails or what if uh, latency increased by uh, some uh, parameter or what if the database uh, gets stopped. So we can verify all these using the chaos testing. Now to quantify it, uh, we, need, uh, we should check what is the time it takes to detect, what is the time for notification and escalations, what is the time for uh, to public notifications, etc. We also uh, check with this uh, what is the time to recovery, time for self healing, whether it happens or not, and time to clear everything and make the system stable. So all these things can be verified easily with the help of chaos testing. If you are on cloud, uh, and especially on Azure cloud, we have this chaos studio, uh, which you can use to do the chaos testing. So first of all, you need to take the account access, and then you can define your uh, template, how it and where it will run. So you need to know uh, which VM you will shut down or which part you will shut down. So you need to, what is, how it is used, you need to define the experiment. Step by step, you can say, okay, uh, in step one, what I want to do. In step two, what I want to do. What is the fault that I want to introduce? Next fault can be like uh, VM shutdown, or Cosmos DB failure, or CPU pressure, etc. So whatever fault you want to introduce, you can introduce those to test your, the application failure. Now, do we need to run it in production or do we need to run it in QA environment? So ideally, you should uh, experiment in production or similar environment. System behave differently depending on the environment and traffic patterns. Since the behavior of utilization can change at any time, sampling rate traffic is the only way to reliably capture the request path. To guarantee both authenticity of the way in which the system is exercised and relevance to the current deployed system, Chaos strongly prefers to experiment directly on the production traffic like Netflix does it on the production as well. You can automate the experiment to run continuously or you can schedule it as well. Running experiments manually is laborious, intensive and ultimately unstable, unsustainable. We can automate the experiments and run them continuously. Chaos engineering builds automation into a system to drive both orchestration and analysis. So, so thank you so much for watching today's video and if you think the videos are helpful, do like the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you so much.